Well, hello, friends. It's Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, B-Pal Picks Edition, where I give you picks daily, total and size. And I get people it, sometimes write me letters like uh, Penelope Cartwright from Boise, Idaho, asking, uh, could you please tell me what your favorite pick of the day is? Thank you for your letters. Pretty short letter, I guess. But uh, love your letters. Send them. Guido goes down to the letter table, letter room every day and brings up the sack of letters. And we all frolic and read them, and it's fun. But um, I, it's paid. People pay me for that information. I have uh, clients that, if you want to be one, I have a Patreon. You can start there. And uh, you it, it just ask for it down in the, co the comment section. I'll give you a free month, and there's only a month left of the season. So, uh, but then we also have tennis, uh, baseball, everything to keep you going till next hockey season. Tennis, especially, you'll make tons of money. And if you stick around, you'll never pay more than $25, but it goes up every year. So, yeah, sorry about that, Penelope. I can't give you the best bet, but you can go listen to Best Bet Ed. He always does that, he's great. Um, but I'll give you all the picks, and then if you were to pick all the picks, if you were to do it what I did exactly verbatim over the hockey season, you would have been up 52 units this year. So a unit is whatever you place on a bet normally for if it's a single unit bet, meaning if you had, say, a single unit bet for you is $10. If you bet... Three units would be thirty dollars, and sometimes I give bets like that all over the place. I and it uh, what I what I do is it uh, it's like hedge betting. I do a hedge bet system, and in the end of it all, you make a lot of money. If you just like to do crazy parlays, I do those too, though. But let's get to our picks for the twenty first for the playoffs. By the way, in the playoffs after today. I'm down a little bit. Yeah, it wasn't my best day. But we'll do that afterwards. I'll give you the picks right now. Washington versus Boston. Um, when I, you're getting two. Oh, what are we getting here? That's the side. By the way, I'll take the under. But now that Samsonov's back for Boston, which I didn't really expect. Um. I'm starting to like Washington a little more here. Um, Boston won the last one. They pulled it out. But I think in this one, assuming no extra injuries that I'm not aware of, I'm going to take Washington on the money line for 235. Play it safe. I don't. I think it's good to play it safe. Put it on the puck line for 153. That is a high percentage play. They, this, game, this series has not... There has not been one time in the series where a team has been ahead by two goals. So taking Washington on the PL, adding it in a uh, parlay or whatever, is a really good play. Um, but I'm, I think I'm pretty confident on this one. I think I'm just going to go money line and take the juice. It's the second game against Boston on the road. They lost the first one. Um, I think this is probably going to go seven, so I'm going to take Washington. Carolina versus Nashville. If there was ever a sweep, this is it. Carolina's just rocking. Nashville put up a pretty good fight last game, I guess, but they look pretty beat up after pretty much being in the playoffs, really, at least as far as fighting and having to scratch, claw and scratch their way since – all, like before the trade deadline, <laughs> they went, they had a terrible start and had to bail themselves out. And that's very stressful, very hard on the body, very hard on the mind. Use a, uh, teams use a lot more energy when they got to play with that kind of intensity all the time. Um, so I think Carol, I think Nashville's just pooched out. I'm going to take Carolina, get 175 on the money line. Might as well just go that. And uh, I'll take, what was the total? Was there a five on this? Yeah, take the over. Take the over here. Um, 
I, I think Nashville's going to be tired. This could be really a tough one for Nashville. So um, we'll go over five. I wouldn't put that as your larger bet, though. See, sometimes I give you a little bit of leans on which my favorites and what's not. Winnipeg versus Edmonton. Um, I'm going to go Edmonton on this one, but I'm not going to put a lot on it because the first game, like I, what I've been concerned about, I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan, is Edmonton does not have what we call playoff performers too much on their roster. That not I'm not talking about McDavid and all that. I'm talking about guys that turn the needle with intensity. Like Montreal you saw with Perry today. Now, forget about that incident that happened. But um, and Anderson and guys like that. They're the guys that go out and it's a war. Edmonton really doesn't have players that can turn this into a war. Winnipeg does. They're going to have to outskill Winnipeg. And Winnipeg is getting Ehlers and um, Dubois back. I'm going Edmonton because I don't think they're going to drop two on at home. But I'm not as confident as I was before the series after watching that game. Before the series started, I was watching that game. The Edmonton's going to win this series, to tell you the honest truth. Um, as far as the over-under, I'm going to go under. Smith and Hellebuck have been playing really well. Winnipeg is turning, playing a trap on the Oilers right now. So, um, and you're getting really good juice on that. I'll just slightly lean to the under. Colorado versus St. Louis. St. Louis is now screwed. They got Falk out. Uh, Bertuzzo is out, like so much of their defense is out. Perron, who is their best pure shooter, is still injured. I, I, St. Louis is, might win one of these, but I could see this being a sweep too. I really could. Bennington might win one for them or something like that, but I mean, I'm not going to bet on that, really. I'm not. I'm going to go money line. I'm going to go puck line, Colorado, and over. Probably all through this. If St. Louis happens to take one, oh well. I mean, I'm still up on the series. That's the main thing. Okay, that's my picks. I'm going to look at my picks from last night, which were not really that great, to tell you the honest truth. Um, if this stays 3-2, I at least get the under on this. I took the wild and uh because i liked the way they were playing but now the golden knights just said oh yeah right we know this is this is the golden knights that i was waiting for right here i'm kind of ticked i didn't go with it anyways if the golden knights play like this they'll win the rest of the games i'm really kind of sometimes i get mad at myself when i make certain picks um and uh the under here, Talbot, was Talbot going to hold up through the whole series? Yeah, I had a lot of questions I had to ask. Anyways, uh, we lost, I think it was medium, medium on that. So we're down four, per, four pearls on that. But we're, we get it, a lot of it back here because my pick of the day, which, I'm not, which you're not going to get on unless you have my Patreon, was uh, Panthers Lightning plus one and a half in the first period. And that was five units, five pearls. Almost plus money. So we made five. We just made up the five, four that we lost. We also had the Panthers ML, which gave us another yun, uh, uh, another pearl. And we had the under, which gave us another one. Uh, about a pearl and three quarters or so. 6.75 pearls. We lose some of it here because we had the... Uh, we had the Islanders and we had the under. Uh, so we're down to a unit and a half. And we lose again because... No, no, sorry. This is pretty much even. We had the under on the Canadians and Leafs. and But we had the Leafs. So broke even. Ah, oh, jeez. I didn't lose after all. I've been pretty much even these whole playoffs. My friend Curtis Davis, I should be doing his picks. He is just rocking here. He sends me picks all the time. I'm going to start using his picks more, but he brings them too late for me. He's, a, he's probably the best capper, hockey capper I've ever seen. He's amazing. 
Uh, very, very good. In fact, I'm going to start, once he starts settling down in his work, I'm going to start using them more for uh, my uh, Patreon as well. Just to bring it up another notch. All right, guys. Tell me what you guys did down there in the comment section. And by the way, uh, I got a letter uh, from Penelope uh, Cran Cranbrook from Boise, Idaho, asking, uh, "What did you? Uh, why? Why are your views so low now?" And the answer is, I got shadow banned. So what shadow ban means is that, and if you're not getting no, well, I guess if you're not getting notifications, you're not watching. But um, what shadow ban means is some somebody put in a complaint about me, or people put in a complaint about me about something, and they ban you. Meaning that, like, if you search NHL picks on YouTube, you won't find me. They take you off the hashtag list. Uh, I hopefully until they do an investigation and find out I'm doing nothing wrong. I don't know. It's been a while. It's really bothering me because I love how I'm talking to you guys. I've lost all the comments in the comment section, everything. But if you have, please comment in the comment section. Talk to me, man. Tell me what your picks are and stuff like that. Until then, till tomorrow. Uh, oh, and yeah, have a great day. And thank you guys because those you listening to me right now, are people that actually search me. And uh, I love you guys. You guys are freaking awesome. Have a great day. Take care. Okay, bye.